because I'm in one of the divine nine, the one that you are in this for life, not one of those, you know, interest groups, sororities, when you are in college and then you can join and then you can drop and you can be done with it. But anyway, I want to talk about why narcissistic people, why they join sororities and you know, group organizations like that, where you're forced into a sisterhood, where you're forced to be around a group of people. And why these people join this to begin with, if their heart is really not for people. Because narcissists, they want to be able to be in some form of control. So they feel as if they are obligated narcissists feel that when they are obligated to someone whether you are family whether you are a spouse or even if you're an ex-spouse if you have children with them then you all are obligated to each other in a certain way and narcissistic people they feel that because you are obligated to them that you are obligated to put up with any type of pain or abuse or mistreatment that they want to give hello and they feel that they feel entitled to treat people any old kind of way and they get fuel off of treating people a certain way and a person cannot escape the madness because they wouldn't treat a regular friend someone that they care about someone that they want in their life or a romantic partner when they want these people in their lives they will treat them a certain way they will treat them with kindness and respect because they know that that person could just get up and leave and not have anything to do with them but when they are around people that they are obligated to then they feel that they have room to be whoever they want to be where they can The mask can completely drop. And they can be the toxic person that they want to be. Because then people are forced to put up with it. When they feel obligated to a person, they feel as if people are supposed to put up with all of their personality, all of their rage, all of their pain, and you aren't allowed to leave because then that proves your disloyalty to them. 311 on my clock. So when narcissists join organizations like a sorority, when you are in damn near embedded to this group of girls, the line sisters that you join with, they feel as if they can, they feel as if they can just treat you any old kind of way and you're not allowed to question them, you're not allowed to challenge them, and you're not allowed to stop dealing with them. Because the minute that you create distance, the minute that you start creating boundaries and you start not talking to them as much, not coming around them, not dealing with them, then at that point, they're no longer getting the supply. And a lot of times when you think of narcissistic supply, it's not always you giving something to them but it's you allowing them to treat you a certain way. When you allow these narcissists to disrespect you, to abuse you, to belittle you, to bully you, that is them garnering supply from you. Because while they are pulling on your energy by taking away your power, by diminishing your power and making you feel small, they are feeling empowered by putting another person down. Thus, they are gaining supply. And they feel as if they are entitled to receive this supply from you. And even if they don't like you, even if they don't really care for you, they can pretend that they love you. They can say that they love you or care about you, but their actions show otherwise because you don't hurt and abuse a person that you claim that you love. So basically, narcissists want to be able to garner supply. And a lot of times because of their own wounds, their own insecurities, their own lack of self-esteem, their own 
misery within their own life they feel that the only way they really would be able to get rid of this misery is by projecting that misery onto other people by bringing somebody else down by hurting a person by bringing misery to another person is what gives them the supply that they need so how can i be able to narcissists think how can i be able to treat people a certain way and they are forced to put up with it let me join an organization where you have to be around these women you have to be around these group of girls you're forced to be around them and when you're forced to be around somebody they feel like they don't owe you that respect they don't owe you that human decency they don't owe you that care they don't owe you that that love So what these narcissists do is they hide behind these organizations. They, they will be the main ones making all of these social media posts talking about how much they love their line sisters and how much their life has enhanced because these people are in it when really it's all bullshit. It is all a facade. It is all for show. It is all for them to pretend that they have something glorious in their life when really they don't even like the people. They don't even care for the people. They don't even love the people. Those people are just bonded to them or binded to them, whatever the right word is. But it's all a facade because behind closed doors, they don't treat those people like a sister. They don't treat those people like they love them. Behind closed doors, they're a complete fucking monster to their blind sisters. And the thing is, narcissism is stronger in numbers. So when you have a group of narcissists that come together, they were hiding for such a long time. And then when they come around each other, and it all it takes is just one narcissist to plant the seed into the rest of the group, the rest of the group of narcissists. And once that, nar that one main narc, that malignant narcissist, pokes the bear, plants the seed, awakens the narcissistic demon within them, that's when those narcissists will have a shit show. That's when they will all conjure up together to abuse their targeted scapegoat. So when you see people from one of the divine nine sororities talking about how their line sisters were bullies and they were mean and they were abusive and they no longer talk to them they no longer deal with them it's because they were the targeted scapegoat in a group full of narcissistic line sisters because these people think that you're supposed to just put up with whatever treatment that they give you and that these people they don't have much interest on treating you right, on doing right by you. So what this does is this garners them consistent supply. They have a punching bag that they can unleash their pain onto. They have someone that they can consistently beat on, not just physically, but verbally, emotionally. They have someone that they can just emotionally dump on and that person is not allowed to break free they have someone that they can just unleash all of this pain onto because they are in close proximity they're in each other's inner court and because they're stronger in numbers they all will garner up they all will conjure up together and go against that one scapegoat and then they will always protect each other and they will make it seem as if the one that they are picking on is really the problem when really they're just the one that's being emotionally abused. Because when you have narcissists that protect each other and enable each other, it keeps that cycle of abuse going. And the only way for the target escape goat to end it is to break free and to walk away. Okay, part two to narcissism and sororities. So what happens is you have a group of weak insecure immature 
women okay when you get a group of weak women together these women would rather when you have a group of weak women that get together they would rather unleash their negativity onto one person instead of growing and maturing as a person because narcissists they don't truly want to grow they don't want to change they don't want to evolve they don't want to stop doing their behavior that is causing harm to others so they have no interest in growing they have no interest in changing they have no interest in being a good person to the group and especially when you have women that join a sorority it's about the sisterhood it's also about the service it's also about the scholarship but sisterhood is one of the core values but let me tell you those women they are not their sister's keeper they aren't because to be your sister's keeper you have empathy you have compassion you have love you have a respect for your fellow sister but these women these women are not their sister's keeper if this was the story of Cain and Abel they would be the one to unalive their brother and then try to act like they didn't do it the same way with Cain and Abel when Cain unalived Abel and he left the forest and then God goes hey Cain where's your brother so Cain goes, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? By those words, am I my brother's keeper? He's asking, am I even supposed to take care of him? Am I even supposed to respect him? Am I even supposed to love him or care about him? Protect him? Am I supposed to? Is that even my job? So because they question whether or not they owe that to their brother, the fact that Cain even questioned if he even owed that to his brother shows how it doesn't matter if a person is your blood brother or even fraternity brother, your blood sister or your fraternity or your sorority sister. They do not care. They're not going to care for you. They don't feel that they owe that respect and that loyalty to you. However, narcissistic people, they feel entitled to have people being loyal to them. They feel like everyone else owes them loyalty, but they don't owe the same loyalty in return. So narcissistic people, they go into sororities for the reason for it to serve themselves, not to serve others. The only service that they care about is how it's going to benefit them in the long run. Because one thing that being in a sorority gives you is networking opportunities it is what you know but it's also who you know and by having your sorority on your resume allows you more opportunities it allows you to network it allows you to connect with other people other sororities like other people from your own sorority or just other divine nine sororities when they see that it's networking opportunities so it allows people to have opportunities for them to advance in their career and lifestyle livelihood in any type of way it also allows them to be on the board the the chairman or the you know it's kind of like like student council in a way but not really student but you know what i'm trying to say like you have like your chairman you have your president your vice president your treasurer your your secretary you have all of that and by having those leadership positions you're able to also add that to your resume and you're able to advance because you have the experience with leadership positions. So really it's, and especially narcissists are the main ones that want to be on the chair board. They want to be the ones that are president, vice president, tre um, treasurer, uh, secretary, just any type of way that they can be, or have some type of leadership position. They're the main ones that want to take it because then they have more of a reason to hide people won't really suspect that they are in this evil person because how can an evil person be wanting to have these leadership positions no it's all a facade it's all a game it's all manipulation 
and they use it as a way for them to abuse that power and take advantage of other people because they have they are in a position of power so these people join these organizations because they see that it's going to benefit them in such a way even if they know that they aren't bringing any personal betterment to the group or to the people around them they know that it's helping them in such a way also narcissists they do not care about people they don't really care for people but so they join these sororities knowing that they're going to have a sisterhood but they have no interest in being a sister to those people they want people to be a sister to them but they don't want to be sisterly to their sisters they are not their sister's keeper they would be the one to put their sister in harm's way in an uncomfortable position or put them in a situation that's going to cause them hurt or harm or trauma or betrayal. They are not protective over their sisters. They don't look out for their sisters. They do the exact opposite. They intentionally put them through harm. They intentionally go out of their way to create scenarios for their other sisters so that they can experience humiliation or shame or embarrassment or to be looked at in a negative way to be seen in a negative light these are the women that go around and they spread rumors about their other sisters because they want other other sorority members to look at certain members in a negative light in a bad light these are the women that will gather up together to do to cause harm to another person they will gather up together to do wrong to another person and they're very quick to do so but they are very slow to come together to do the right thing to treat someone with respect to do good for someone else so why do they join in the first place if all they're going to do is do the exact opposite of what these sororities stand for the answer is simple they're only there to serve themselves. They are not there to serve others. Service is a part of what these sororities were founded off of. They're not in the service to help other people or to help people in need. No, the only way that they actually will help is if they're going to benefit it in some way. Are they going to be able to get any type of clout or recognition or any type of acknowledgement for it? That's why they do it are they going to benefit from it these are the people that are not going to voluntarily give because they want to give they only give if they're going to get something back in return if they can fulfill an agenda if they can do something so that way they are able to use it as a way to manipulate later it's all for a selfish purpose it's all for self-serving it's all so that they can serve themselves and then when it comes to the sisterhood like I said, they are not their sister's keeper. They are not there to be sisterly. They are not there to love their sister. They are there to receive all of the benefits of having a sister, someone that loves them, cares about them, helps them out, is assisting them, but they do not reciprocate. They are not interested in reciprocating. They are only interested in receiving. They are not interested in giving. And because these evil women can hide behind these sororities and they can hurt people behind closed doors, they can hurt people in private and you have your private meetings, they can be verbally abusive. Or in now in this day and age, we have the age of social media and group chats and phones and people are getting in these group chats and they are allowing their thumbs to be as powerful than their tongue. They are saying, they are ganging up on people, bullying people, verbally abusing people, but they're all doing this privately in group chats behind closed doors. And then when you come out in public, they want to act like everything is fine. Everything is all fine and dandy. And they don't want anyone to air out what is really going on so that they know that they are do what they are doing is wrong. And they don't want anyone to repeat it because they don't want their image to be tarnished for what they're doing. Part 32, sorority members being narcissists. Okay. So who are the people? So who are the people that these narcissists will target? 
those that they will bully, those that they, those that they will ostracize, those that they will be mean to and belittle and abuse and disrespect. They pick on those that are more vulnerable, those that are not really able to really defend themselves or stick up for themselves. Those people that are defenseless. We all know those people. We've been in school with them. We've seen the kids, the ones that are more sensitive, the ones that are not as strong, those that don't have a bigger backbone, those that just let people push them around. It is not that they let people push them around because they feel like they deserve to be pushed around, but they genuinely just don't know how to stand up for themselves, how to defend themselves, and how to get people to stop pushing them around. These people are afraid of confrontation. They're afraid of getting into an altercation with a person because a lot of times what can happen is the people that pick on them, they may be bigger than them or they may be stronger than them or they may know how to fight more, fight better than them. So those that are afraid of confrontation, they're afraid that if they were to stand up for themselves and defend themselves, that these people will then fight them or attack them and now that's another issue that they have to watch out for because these people they're like I don't want to get beat up I don't want anyone to physically hurt me so they think if they were to just ignore and avoid the conflict that they can they're what they're doing is they are protecting themselves they're keeping themselves safe they're in survival and a lot of times when a person is in a very traumatic situation and they have to go into survival mode it is fight flight freeze or fawn a lot of people will there are some that will fight and they will fight to get their way out they will fight to get people to leave them alone but not everyone is strong enough to do so there are some people that will flight they will flee they will leave they will leave the situation leave the premises they're not about to deal with it and by them walking away and leaving that's them avoiding the situation but it doesn't always help because when they come back around it's just another opportunity for these people to belittle and hurt and disrespect them you also have freeze where a person literally freezes up in the face of adversity in the face of conflict in the face of being bullied in the face of being abused they literally freeze and they cannot move they cannot speak they are in a frozen state out of fear and we have to stop victim shaming and victim blaming these people and thinking, why didn't you say that they should have, could have, would have stood up for themselves or helped themselves? And not everybody has the strength to do so. Not everybody knows how to do so. Not everyone was taught how to do so. Not everybody has the heart where they are okay with standing up for themselves because then they feel like they are being mean. And some people are just, that's just not in their character. And we instead need to stop looking at the victims and wondering why didn't they speak up sooner? Why didn't they should have, could have, would have did this to prevent it? Instead of looking at the perpetrator, looking at the aggressor, looking at the abuser, looking at the attacker, looking at the assaulter and wondering, asking them, asking the perpetrator, why are you doing this to this person anyway? Why are you going out of your way to disrespect this person, to belittle this person? Why are you stirring up conflict with this person? If this person is not bothering you, why are you going over there and bothering them? If this person has not done anything to you to deserve this type of punishment from you, why are you committing a crime against them? If this person is just minding their own, minding their business, and you are going out of your way to bring destruction and chaos and drama and stress to this person's life, why are you doing that? What are you possibly gaining from this? What are you gaining from putting another person down? We need to start asking the perpetrators these questions because a lot of times they don't have a real reason. They may conjure up something or they may make up something and say, oh, or, well, the other day they had stepped on my shoe. So that's why you have to go relentlessly verbally attack them every time you see them because they step on your shoe one time. But you see what they don't add is they don't say that when the person stepped on their shoe, they said, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. They don't talk about how the person fixed it. They don't talk about how the person apologized. They don't talk about how the person is like, okay, here, let me go get you a wipe. Let me go get you a tissue or a wet towel 
so you can clean off your, your scuff on your shoe. I'm so sorry I did not see you. They don't talk about that. They don't mention how the person that they are going against is actually a good person because narcissists, they intentionally target people that are vulnerable, people that are kind hearted because they feel like they can easily manipulate the situation. Once we start holding the perpetrators accountable for what they are choosing to do to another person that that other person is choosing to not do to them, then we can stop normalizing abuse. Then we can stop enabling this abuse. When abuse is enabled, abuse becomes normalized and abuse is no longer seen as abuse. It's just seen as just normal behavior. And that's how narcissism has become. It's become so enabled, it's become normalized. And then you have so many narcissistic people just floating around in every single, every single group. And you have people that are being targeted, people that are being hurt, people that are being traumatized, people that are being abused people that are going through so much stress and turmoil at the hands of these other people that they choose to unalive themselves. You have people that are doing so much to cause hurt and harm to another person that they let their emotions get the best of them and they get to a point where that anger becomes dangerous. And then it gets to a point where they intentionally or accidentally just in the heat of the moment unalive someone. But they don't have the moral character and moral standing to admit what they have done. And they will go on about their life and act as if they didn't do anything wrong. They will not turn themselves in. They will not give closure to the situation. They will just look at the life loss as a lost cause and they could just move on with their lives. That is how dangerous narcissistic abuse is. And when you're dealing with narcissists, you deal with them by not dealing with them. You don't put up with that. And it's very sad and unfortunate that a lot of these abusive people come into these sororities because they feel as if they are obligated to continue to treat people this way with no regard for their feelings. They feel as if they can continue to hurt others and cause others pain. And that the person that they are inflicting pain upon, they look at that person as beneath them, as someone that deserves it, as someone that is less than human, as someone that is an object, a punching bag. And as much as the narcissist enable the abusive behavior, the one that is being abused, them standing up for themselves is not enabled. It is seen as disturbing the peace they are looking at the person defending themselves as problematic as the one that's in the wrong but everything that was just done to them is not wrong but them retaliating is wrong it's a double standard and going through an experience like this is very very exhausting it's very draining it's psychological abuse it causes a lot of damage And it can take a person years to recover from. Years. So one thing we have to be real about is narcissism is everywhere. And narcissism is in these sororities. And because you have people that want to sweep things under the rug and they want to... Anything that's... You cannot heal with things that you keep covered up. So now that we have people that are, have experienced narcissistic abuse at first hand in a sorority, them coming out and speaking about it is helping to bring awareness to what has been existing so that way we can have this cease to exist moving forward. And anyone that is not that does not want to call out the abusive behavior, you are either an abuser or an enabler and you are part of the problem. If you're not contributing to the solution, you are contributing to the problem and narcissistic abuse for good.